needs does he serve by Hello, killing? Hello, and he welcome cuts. back to Mind Juice. Let's get into it. Psychopathology, in short, is a discipline best understood as an in-depth study of problems related to mental health. In this way, psychopathology emphasizes focus on exploring problems related to mental health. How to understand them, how to classify them, and how to approach, rehabilitate, and optimally resolve them. This study of mentality can include a long list of elemental factors such as symptoms, behaviors, causes, course, development, etc. Its causes, onset, include, biolo include biological factors such as genetics and brain chemistry, feelings of isolation, lack of social support, traumatic and or stressful experiences. Brian, as we know, is socially awkward, appears to have a lack of awareness related to social cues, normal dynamics of exchange amongst and with others, reported to have been bullied while in grade school due to being overweight, rejection, and deprived from intimate and sexual experiences, as we do not believe he had any romantic relationships in the past. An article that I found very intriguing, and I believe gleaned some great insight into Brian Koberger leading up to his eventual acts. Suspect in Idaho killings had made creepy comments to brewery staff, as well as customers, the bar owner states. The suspect in the killings of the four University of Idaho students, whom we know by name as Brian Koberger, has been known to some employees at a Pennsylvania brewery to make creepy and inappropriate comments, the business owner said. The owner continued, Koberger had gone by himself to the brewery a few times and wouldn't sit at the bar and would sit at the bar, clarifying that these exchanges happened months ago. Further now, reflecting on those interactions in light of the recent arrest, the owner recalls that Koberger would never do anything in front of him or management, but he said he would make comments under his breath or if only one person was working at the bar. In fact, in the bar system, wherein staff inputs a customer's food and or drink orders, staff had noted had made a notation in the system that would pop up when his ID was scanned. Staff had put in there, hey, this guy makes creepy comments. Keep an eye on him. He'll have two to three beers, and then he begins to get a little too comfortable, he said. The owner continued, stating that Koberger would ask the female staff who they were with at the brewery, where they lived, and what their work schedule was. Further, he said that if the woman blew him off, he appeared to get a little upset noting that one time he had called one of his staff members a disparaging or degrading term, which I believe we learned is B-I-T-C-H, when she refused to answer his questions. The owner decided to confront this behavior. I went up to him and I said, Hey Brian, welcome back. We appreciate you coming. I just wanted to talk to you real quick and make sure that you're going to be respectful this time and we're not going to have any issues, he said. He was completely taken aback. He was shocked that I was saying that. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. You totally have me confused. Koberger had not returned to the brewery since. The owner approached him about the complaints from his staff. What we know. While attending DeSales University during his Master's of Arts program in Criminology, he studied under Dr. Catherine Ramsland, a high esteemed profiled professor who was well known for her work in psychological autopsies. That is, understanding the mentality of mass murderers, spree killers, and serial killers. Most notably, she authored a book on BTK, Dennis Rader, wherein she shared her ongoing interactions over the course of five years. She focused on understanding his psyche for as she states, he defies many of the formulas that we typically see and or use. He was an outlier. He did not fit the mold per se. Hence, she was intrigued and was wanting to learn how and why he did turn out the way he did. She shared having played chess with him a few times, exchanging letters wherein BTK would give her coded riddles for her to solve with her, with his, when she responded. This was one of Brian Koberger's professors. Imagine the insight he gleaned into his own self under this knowledge. Although she has declined to speak directly on the issue in regards to teaching coursework with Brian Koberger, a classmate of his came forward recently and revealed that 
Brian would often interrupt Dr. Ramsland, talking over her, as if he knew more about the subject matter than she did. I called them projects. There were different people in the town that I was involved in. Stocking and scrolling. You go through the trolling stage and then the stocking stage. She was in the stocking stage when this happened. Within the field of neuroscience, we have learned of knowledge and it has granted a lot of information in regards to the brains of psychopaths, hinting that it very well may be a brain disorder, born with or nurtured. Research has shown that the brains of psychopaths do process things differently. They're very shallow. They develop very shallow emotional connections. They're cold, lack remorse. Here, as you will see and hear with James Holm, the notable Colorado theater shooter on the night of the Dark Knight premiere, a psychiatrist asked James, how were those thoughts and those feelings developing within you at that point, referring to the months, May and June, leading up to his horrific act that day? James Holmes responds, uh, kind of consuming me, it became the main focus. I believe the suspect, Brian Koberger, was exhibiting, and has been for some time, the genesis of a mentality like that of a serial killer, empowered by developing psychopathology due to lack of social support, isolation, trauma of being bullied, rejection from women, etc. What needs does he serve by killing? He covets. Brian pursued the avenue of obtaining a PhD in criminology to better understand himself. With that said, I believe Brian Koberger was aware of his psychology in comparison to that of his peers. He understood what made him different, such as the violent and dark thoughts without feeling the remorse, yet being enticed and excited by the idea. Did he continue to study in psychology, criminology, and criminal justice to better understand the normalcy and or the process of apprehension to in turn use said knowledge to what he projected would outwit, outsmart, always keeping himself one step of authorities, using his education to meanwhile depict and lead them away from himself and his committed acts. For example, typically when one learns of a killing with a knife, said like crime would be most understood and profiled as the perpetrator being one who had some pent up rage or anger, such as a spousal discord due to cheating, um, pursuit of life with an incoming mistress, um, usually it's due to rage due to a deep rooted relationship. Suspects often reflect some degree of personal immediate social circle connection. Knowing this, it's related to statistics within the criminology canon. Brian would have been able to project the initial investigative outlook. That is, looking at a recent relationship nature, i.e. such as Kaylee Gonsalves recently breaking up with Jack Decor, or soror sorority fraternity tensions, which have been mentioned. Uh, a landlord, someone who's recently come to change locks or clean the carpet or a local telephone person. Statistically, stabbings typically result from a falling out amongst one's immediate said social dynamics and or relations. Normally, such type of angst and rage develops out of a deep-rooted emotion, long-tenured ties, etc. Brian, on the contrary, is cold, lacks remorse, and quite frankly, it doesn't appear he has even had the opportunity to even establish developed relations of this sort. However, he still experiences feelings thoughts, emotions that evoke similar, similar level hate and rage. Psychopathology can be considered a brain disorder. Over time, he began to understand himself well enough, recognizing himself as different than everyone else. Hence, he embraced the mentorship of his craft, the serial killers, and pri prioritized his research on how others' feelings and emotions affect their decision making when committing these criminal acts as we see with his research post. I believe he had the intention to become a repeated serial killer. 
And much like Elliot Roger, he seems to be dabbled in the incel type of community, the 4chan, the men who don't know how to connect and earn that rite of passage with women. And when it comes to men, there's a big masculinity thing where um, I guess I don't have that. I was fortunate, I guess, in social. Uh, but men that, that can't achieve that, that manhood, that Don Juan sooning of women, you know, it affects their ego. It affects their psyche. Serial killers often select methods that allow them to go undetected, allowing them to continue on, believing they are always one step ahead of authorities. Understanding that stabbings typically suggest personal and or intimate connection. Brian selecting a knife allowed him to outsmart what he knew would be the initial investigative suspect focus. The reality is that Brian's pent up rage and anger resembles that of one whom would be considered a personal and or intimate relation to the victim. However, his source of vengeance was not propelled by deep rooted love, loss, etc like is often the case in the latter, yet is instead motivated by his fixation and inability to obtain and appease his sexual appetite in a normal and efficient manner. Coupling that with the storm of having no remorse, rep repetitive experiences of rejection, ultimately his weak social aptitude and awareness, all compiles up throughout his development as a man. Did Brian study in psychology, criminology, criminal justice to better understand the process of apprehension, forensics, investigative tactics, which in turn he believed would allow him to harness his pathology with a criminal IQ via the studied mentorship of previous dangered minds such as BTK, James Holmes, Ted Bundy, Elliot Roger, that he believed would enable him to work undetected and continue on his trek to becoming a serial killer. I believe so. I suggested that to John we ought to get Mattel to make little dolls that walk and say, I know the Bundy monster. Um. Now, I found this Papa Roger character, which is believed to be Brian Koberger, learned after his arrest. Real quick note here, as you guys have seen, not just this, there's another one I can't recall the name on Facebook used, another identity um, that's been tracked back to him. He allegedly posted a TikTok where he was divulging, you know, to be an inside source of a family member of law enforcement, um, which is rather eerie. So either way, it looks like he did intentionally keep himself close to the investigation by posting and mingling himself amidst people um but i believe his research outlook on life in general um, bleeds through those social forums to where he can be depicted and this is a great example to where you i believe you can just tell that it's him if you recall his research question okay okay this papa roger character which is believed to be brian koberger learned after his arrest Look at these research type questions he poses in a Facebook group designated for the Idaho Four Victims. As you will see, there is a D. Stubblefield, which is the individual's last name, that did a brilliant job exchanging with him. It makes me wonder if this is some type of undercover because it was just brilliant. So, wherever you are, man, um, I would love a comment from you, but uh, great job. I think it was, was classic. Um, Further, look at the matter of fact, or matter of facts, not posed as questions, yet asserted throughout by Papa Roger or Brian. This first one here, he asserts the killer has a sexual dysfunction. Thoughts? I feel like the white car isn't relevant. Which, if it is Brian, he's going to want to spin that narrative because it is relevant, but he wants to get people going other directions. Fight me. Law enforcement is no closer to solving this than they were 30 days ago. Little did he realize they were on to him all along. And these type of posts probably didn't help. Day 39. The killer is not in the victim's immediate circle. The killer is not a student. Thoughts? Now, just these posts here, stated as matter of fact, all of which, considering what we know now, 
are true. Further, this exchange between him and D. Stubblefield includes Stubblefield suggesting that the authorities were able to determine the type of weapon or knife detail via observing bruising around the wounds. That is, they would be able to identify a type of knife guard upon impact, which is a plausible, typical forensic thought. Meanwhile, Papa Roger, or BK, suggest they know due to a sheath being left at the scene. And then he goes on to suggest that this was information leaked in the beginning of the investigation. No, no, it wasn't. I've been following it closely. That was never revealed. It's such an odd comment. Um, the other character, Stubblefield, is surprised by this theory, <laughs> as you'll see, um, later suggesting that such is only information the killer would know, which I agree with. He, Papa Roger, proceeds to ask, which hand do you think the killer had the knife in? What do you think he did as he entered the room? D. Stubblefield calls him out for being a creep, for being creepy, and even states, you sound like a psycho. Even going on later to reference him as a serial killer, um, which Brian kind of acts kind of weird about and doesn't really know how to act, um, which I believe shows that his, his cues at not being able to pick up on things. One point he says, why are you angry? When it was clear that the guy was being sarcastic, he, he can't pick up on that, that type of thing. What healthy mentality will be able to? If this was Brian Koberger, I would imagine there was a knife she found at the scene. Who else would know this? And then the last note on the Papa Roger, um, Brian Koberger connection. It made me wonder, why Papa Roger? His attitudes, as you've known from my last videos, always seem to stick out to me as like an incel sort. Um, he's amongst that community. It made me reflect on Elliot Roger, um, for who unfortunately is infamous for his dark acts due to his hate against women for not being sexually curious about him, um, his repeated rejection and over and over. A pretty much similar vein of angst as BK. So I ask, is Papa Roger, Papa Roger, like Rogers I believe is a common name, but Roger, no S, is Papa Roger an inside incel nod to Elliot? Papa Elliot Roger? Very well could be, as Elliot was deemed a hero within the community, even having memes and t-shirts made labeling him a supreme human. Twisted stuff I know, and downright inappropriate. But it's true. Existence of loneliness, rejection, and unfulfilled desires. Regardless, the takeaway is clear. There will always be unforeseen variables that a budding serial killer slash psychopath cannot account for. Although they may study and prepare as much as they wish, the white launcher being caught on a body cam at 3 a.m., during a separate alcohol stop of three kids. The girl screaming aloud, which we believe we can hear. The car caught on a gas station cam. Genetic genealogy. Tracing the social media through 4chan, Facebook, Reddit. All of which are variables that he couldn't account for and which are ultimately what got him caught. His cell phone information. It's alleged that his pinging information was all around that of, of Kaylee. She was being stalked. Brian was stalking her. Just like BTK did. It was phase two. It was phase two. He is indeed the least suspect. Innocent until proven guilty. But his arrogance thus far. His anticipation to return swiftly. And resolve this issue. As we know in recent comments shows he has yet to face the brute reality his day is coming <laughs>